need to close that. That needs to be closed before going live. Oh, hey, <laughs> uh, hey, everybody. How's everybody doing? I'm not doing anything weird. Well, this is the King of Anime podcast. We're here to talk about anime. How's everybody doing today? I don't know why I'm talking like this, are you, but I Are am. you okay? <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you suffering a stroke, good sir? <laughs> I am suffering a stroke. It's weird, oh my man. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, good night, everybody. <laughs> yeah. It's been real. Oh, uh, uh, I'm definitely not live with Ding and Rampa Twitter. That's sure. Hey, everybody, what's up? It's the King of Anime Podcast, the show based off the Team Four Stars Anime FMK, where we select a list of anime and week by week we kill our past things based off if they're good or not. We change the word from fuck to pass because fuck, saying fuck every fucking podcast will get it fucking demonetized. So fuck. Uh. <laughs> So yeah, let's let's fucking talk about some anime. But before then, EA, how was your week this week? Uh, gag me with a spoon. Um, but that's some fucking I mean, shit right there. I'm, all right, I guess we're going uh, eighteen plus this this uh, this week. Um, Fuck yeah. Sorry, I couldn't make it last last week. I uh, I had a pretty busy schedule that, and I had some things that I had to take care of. Last week, but I'm glad to be back with my boys and discussing these animes. And I'm, I don't know, I feel like 2020 just needs to go away. <laughs> Sotsky, oh, yeah. how was your fucking day, man? Uh, my day has been fucking good so far. Fuck. Um, yeah. Well, shit! The EA said 20. Oh, shit. <laughs> that was aggressive. Yeah, All this right. This podcast is getting monetized. <laughs> uh, uh, but to, as EA said, 2020 is, is 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 a bad year. But I had a good day, week, I guess you could say. Love Live got announced to air in next month on the third. So that is all I needed to brighten up my day. I'm so happy to see my girl Kanata Kanoe, I Mia Shita. I think that's her name. I, I'm 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 glad to see my girls. Yeah. Um. I'm pretty sure we're watching that for KOA, like 99.99999% sure. Like, I'm taking no for an answer. If any of you disagree, uh, I will cry. Kanichi okay. fucking wa. <laughs> Fuck, man. Why are we fucking cursing so much? Because we're adults, damn it. Oh, well, see, now that's the language I like. Damn it. <laughs> it's also a good blink -wing. Let's sure is. talk about ReZero episode 10, season 2, entitled I Know Hell, in which, yeah, Subaru does indeed know a little bit about hell. A little bit. So EA, what did you think about this episode? Well, I wasn't here last week to talk about the previous episode, but I just want to say, kind of like what I told you earlier, but I'm going to tell everybody else. When the witch of envy, I think is her name, freaking says I love you, like whispers it right into the microphone or into the headset, I literally got goosebumps. I was like, oh my god, that that was so perfectly done. Because you're just hearing stuff normally, and then they're like, we're going to mess with people's minds. It's, I love you. It's like, oh, oh, okay, the hairs are standing up. <laughs> Which Man. hairs? All of them. Oh, okay. every single one of them. Damn. All right. Straight up. Yep. Literally. They are straight up. <laughs> but um, uh, this whole episode itself, like, I feel like the last episode was just like, not to say that this one was bad, but there was a lot more going on in the last episode with Ashidona and all the different witches that got introduced. Which, by the way, what's her name? Daphne. Same voice actress of Yui. I noticed it right away. And, um, but anyway, this particular episode was, uh, what happened this episode? I'm trying to remember. I'm, try, I'm, try, I'm sorry. I'm trying to remember because they all just kind of spliced together. Um, oh, yeah, there was a lot of, no, right. There was a lolly brigade. And, uh, they were doing their thing. Freaking. 
the twist. That's what it was. The twist. Freaking the witch is uh, Amelia. Is Not that at all. right? Not at all. What do you mean? He, he took off the mask. And there she was. Looks like Amelia. Oh, oh. So then she's like a sister or something. Okay, gotcha. Is that your theory? I'd. I mean, I you. I thought it was her for a second, and then you ruined it. You ruined her. So now I'm gonna say it's her sister, or mother, or ex lover, or something. It's Amelia's ex lover, Amelia. Yeah. I mean, you're in love with yourself. And I'm also in love with a stripper. Okay, t Pain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. But overall, that was fun. Uh, it seemed like he, I don't know, like we found out a lot more information about the old, the old lollies or lolly. I don't know, there's like more than one, but she's like a copy of herself and not even the real thing or something. I don't know. But it's important to know everybody in the chat right now, uh, don't even like don't hit at spoilers, don't spoil things. That ain't like we we aren't like re like these guys aren't re zero people. These guys are just we are, watchers. We are dumb. <laughs> all right when it comes to that stuff we we are we know nothing about nothing all i know is is ram is a cheeky bastard and um with some cheeky and, andos and, and and ram is is dead you know that's that's all i know but does she have cheeky nandos i don't know what that means the cheeky nandos kick Nope. The kick. Kick punch, it's all in the mind. <laughs> what are you getting at, sir? It doesn't matter. It's a wrestling move. I'm sorry. I don't know moves. The only moves I know are rock bottom because it doesn't matter what you think. Ah, yes. The, uh, <laughs> what is that? What is it called? No, it doesn't matter. Uh... It doesn't matter what your name is. <laughs> so. Thank you. So, uh,. What did you guys think? Of, well, okay, so Sasuke, what did, what did you what did you think about the Lolly Army specifically? <laughs> um, a lot of lollies to choose from. They all have, but no variety really. Um, overall, I would say Achina has to do a better job of getting different lollies because, I mean, if you're going to have a lo lolly army, it will behoove you to get, like I said, more more variety. Can't just have like all the same ones, but when it comes to Ryuzu, the like uh I forgot what what she addressed herself as. Started with a B, but Bitch. I'm talking about the oh lord. <laughs> uh, no, it, I don't think it, it was that. Was it Billy? I don't think it was, was that. It Bobby. <laughs> Bobby Boucher. <laughs> some high quality H two O. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh God! Sorry, Satsuki. We're terrible. No, I'm. No, I'm looking through the um my screenshots. I don't. I don't think I took a screenshot of it. But um, yeah, I, I thought it was interesting that she had her own individuality. She was someone who branched off from being just a mindless clone like we've seen with the other Ryuzu clone. She actually had a personality like we've seen in this episode. She was drinking tea just for the sake of it. She doesn't need to do it. And she also has the quirk of calling Subaru Young Su. And I'm pretty sure the other clones don't have that because, you know, like I, love, I said. Uh, I love that, by the way. I love that naming convention she does. Subo, Garbo, Rambo. <laughs> Garbo. Yeah. I love that movie. Um, but yeah, I I thought it was interesting. Yeah, for sure. I, I think that how they separate themselves with those little quirks is, is really what I what I took away from it, and I didn't make it I made a mistake in my video by not specifically stating which I want to correct that in this podcast. I said basically that what I thought is at some point um 
the Ryuzu that was talking, the, the one with the staff, uh, became sentient at some point. She was a clone at first, she just did her task, but she became sentient. What I meant by that, to clarify, is that I think she found a meaning beyond just her task. Like, there was something else in her life that, that made her, uh, I don't know, like, awaken as, like, their, their own person, right? And that's what I think happened to, to this Ryuzu. Uh, I don't know, just an interesting thought. And I think a part of that is the quirks. I think, like, there are probably some quirks that, that lead to that happening. Like, obviously it hasn't happened. He's the fourth clone, right? Is that what they said? Yeah, one it of the four like original like, clones. Uh, I was saying, it looks like there was like 20 of them. Well, she's like 400 years old. So she talked about at some point, she kind of just, you know, started doing her thing. Like she, she initially didn't think much about it, and eventually she did, and she came to like her position. So I'm thinking over like, over a great amount of time, there could possibly be some of these clones that, that maybe get a little bit more humanity. And it's something to think about. I don't, I don't know if it's true or not. I don't know anything about that, but I think that would be like a cool thing about those clones to think about. Like, they, they seem like they're hollow, you know, creepers from Minecraft, but they're, you know, they're, they're, they, they could possibly become more than that given enough time. And if the, if, if the, if everything's, you know, in, played right. Well, now that you bring that up, I feel like this Ryuzu plotline and her having more individuality is going to be something that parallels maybe to Beatrice in a different way. Because Beatrice, she's, of course, she's not like a clone or anything, but she too, it, it seems the theme in ReZero this season especially has been honing on bonds and contracts and whatnot and beatrice too is binded by a contract that she can't escape from so she acts in accordance with everything in her gospel so i feel like it already has happened to where she even though she's following the gospel and and whatnot she has a mind of her own and she has a real connection with subaru that may have not been something that should have been followed in the gospel but you know since it didn't go against it she too has like had an attachment to him so i think she's going to also eventually branch off from the gospel and her mother and everything uh kind of like how subaru or not subaru uh ryuzu has strayed from just being a, a clone that does her daily task and, and whatnot Yeah, yeah. I I think it's just super interesting. I know I say that a lot. That's like my go-to phrase, but like I really like mean it for this instance. I just think the Ryuzu and the Louise clones, they're all just so fascinating, so interesting. They're uh by the way, yeah, we're not doing spoilers uh for future events. I should I'm going to make that like a I feel like they get guys get confused. have these guys watch it. But yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that's what I love love about these re thing. And it's it's not something I caught until this anime adaptation came. Like I didn't actually think much of these clones until this episode because I don't know for whatever reason. But I I think it's a pretty cool aspect, like a not like an underrated aspect, but like something that makes this season even more compelling. It's just like another bit of like I don't know, they're almost connected to the world of ReZero itself. You learn more about them, you learn more about the world of ReZero, and uh, I think that makes it really Yeah, I said that as well. This episode did good with the world building, and a lot of people have this this uh, narrow mind that world building just means going to different locations and exploring the world in that way, but I think World, build, world building is also a part of the lore, and I think Ryuzu did that as well with the Echidona thing because she created life basically with this experimentation, and that could be something that we see in the future with other people. We we just don't know, but yeah, I, I thought 
in that regard, the episode did good with world building too. So I have a theory because I haven't read past arc four, but I feel like I feel like Ekidona is gonna be getting a body from like one of these Ryuzu clones in the. Well, probably not because they said it doesn't work. So I I feel like like she because that was her goal, right, to get this body, and I wonder if one of one of the ways to like make sure that Subaru, you know, gets what he wants is is by helping Ekidona get this body. What do you guys think about yeah. that? She's so using he's she's she's a witch. Do you know any witches that are good? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, lay it on me. Um Wiz? That's Kano right. Shuba? So you can't think. Wiz! No, I, no, I can't. I was, I was let the seat go. Wiz. Well, yeah, Wiz, Wiz is pretty nice. Yeah, Wiz is, Wiz is like my favorite. One of my favorites. Yeah, sure. I'll give you Erica Frog from Soul Eater. She became a good guy. What about that cat lady in Soul Eater? Everybody she wasn't good. Them. Oh, wait. Yes. Yeah, yeah, she's... She, um, I guess you could say she's good. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, but she's just kind of there. What's her name? Eclair. Blair. Oh. <laughs> wow. He's Eclair. Oh, you're looking scrumptious like a little Eclair. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so, that is what she was. That is what she was for. Just like fan service. That's yeah. That's all that she was. I mean, I don't know. Uh, so that's why everybody wants to smash her. Well, um, yeah. And, yeah. it, and it's kind of it's kind of fitting because Okubo does Soul Eater, and you know Okubo also did Fire Force, so mm. kind of links. But uh, albeit Blair wasn't as in your face as uh, I won't even name her. <laughs> oh, I will Tamaki. Oh God, <laughs> one of the worst. I'm not even going to get into it, but I want to so bad. Nothing more I like than than just being disappointed in Fire Force. Oh but goodness. anyway, I was, yeah, I, I think she's totally you. I mean, she's making herself seem nice, this and that. I, I don't know. I think it all it comes down to is just the mean, not the mean, but just like she has a goal. Everybody has a goal in this world. They have a means to an end. I think it's like you said, she's just looking to come back into the real world and be like, hey, howdy, hey, look at me. I'm alive again. <laughs> I just don't trust anybody after Roswell. Like, I, I don't... Fucking Roswell knew all along. He did. And it makes me think, That like, son of a bitch. It makes so me, how does he know? It makes me think Frederica knows, or Petra knows, because it's, it's, it's... Like, I never Petra. even considered it. <laughs> Watch Everybody Knows, and this was all just one big giant farce. We didn't tell just you, the... Subaru, because we just thought you knew that we knew. Right, and I would literally be like, I'm going to punch every one of you in the face. Especially Roswell. Petra is going to do the Yandere route and oh, make no. sure like the, the checkpoint is set to like when they go on their date. And, and he, she's going to go on the... She's going to infinitely go on dates with Subaru and kill him like right afterwards. It, literally, that sounds like Future Diary. <laughs> Sure does. Oh my god, Wolf Call says, plot twist, Petra is the mastermind behind everything. Oh my god. That would Don't certainly the be... A, girls. That, that, would, that would certainly be a twist that I would definitely not see coming. I'd be like, what? Well, you mean I, to tell me? <laughs> I think the cool thing about Petra in this season is, and I want to know what you guys think about this, that Petra kind of sort of like this character in season one and then season two she became like a really cool supporting character that pretty much everyone likes like everybody likes petra i don't like her. i don't oh i like petra we, we got we got we got to have someone that doesn't like her oh yep and i don't oh oh <laughs> i mean okay <laughs> Fuck. well i think it was adorable at the end when when she goes to run off and Frederica's like, she's a good girl. And they're like, yeah. She's not. What? EA? I have my doubts about her. 
You don't like orange rim? What? Orange rim. Oh, I thought you said something else. <laughs> oh my god, what did you think uh, I said? You don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I um, but no, she's just she's too likable, and anybody that's too likable in this show immediately causes for suspicion. <laughs> that's you know, I will say, I really liked Roswell in season one because I was like, oh, he's the cool clown guy. Yeah, he's a piece of shit. <laughs> Yeah, I never trusted him. I just I mean, look at the way. Now, do you see the way he looks? He looks like a villain in JoJo. You know, you can oh, never yeah. trust. You can Dude. never trust the way that he looks. He's like, oh, look at me, and I talk like I sing. It's just like, <laughs> no, it's this guy's definitely evil. Dude, I just don't know how. Yeah, he's Kira. He's Kira from Part Four. He's gonna like swap faces and shit. I don't want to say much for Sotsky's sake. Well, uh, Petra can oh. can go off a cliff for all I know. Wow. And I just look over and I see the fan art Sotsky put with the uh, Uisugi. And... What, what's the dumb one's name in QQ? Yotsuba. They're all dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It only took it only took you twenty minutes. I'm the dumb one now. <laughs> I'm one of the quintuplets with a with Petra in the middle, and it's true. That that is the that is the mother and father of Petra. It's Yotsuba and Uisu. I believe it. It's, I mean, it's it, it's the one that makes the most sense. Yeah. What else happened? This it was. Oh, um, what I wanted to bring up was the whole Garfield and Subaru interaction, because I was thinking, why exactly was Garfield acting a lot more friendly towards Subaru? Because things changed definitely, but it changed more on Subaru's perspective and his mentality. He didn't really do too much different from what he did uh, in his previous attempts at setting the things straight. I mean, he knows now that Garfield is a, a greed apostle, and um, he knows that Garfield, of course, is you know hiding something. And he doesn't know exactly what it is, but I think the only thing that really changed was the fact that before Subaru wanted to go back to take the trial, so maybe that's what got him hyper suspicious of Subaru, but. Yeah, I mean, he still had the witches sin and everything, so I'm surprised Garfield just let him go. Or maybe he just looked into his eyes and said, oh, he's kind of cute. I'm going to let him go. <laughs> what an adorable man. What a cute looking, yeah. what a handsome looking, I'm going to let him go. His eyes say that I want to fuck. I better let them go. <laughs> <laughs> his eyes say he's either going to kill me or he's going to kiss me. And I don't know, and I don't know which one I want to do right now. <laughs> and if he kisses me, I don't know if I can hold back. <laughs> right, exactly. My goodness. Like that that Kurt Angle Brock Lesnar thing, where they kissed. Wait, what? Yeah, Kurt Angle Brock Lesnar kissed. I I don't remember that. I remember the a... epic match at WrestleMania where yeah, they each broke their match. fucking neck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, no, it was a build up to that match. It was like the go home show for and they were on SmackDown and they were doing a stare down and Kurt Angle just plants a kiss on Brock Lesnar. On the lips? On the lips. What? Yeah. It was intense. An intense kiss? It was like they were like gonna kill each other and Kurt Angle's just like, Nope, smooch. Oh, no, it, it was just a tongue wrestle. That's it. <laughs> That was the main event. It was just their tongues wrestling. Oh, no. <laughs> EA, no. <laughs> you did it. So, uh, Sasuke, expand, expand upon that Apostle of Greed stuff. No. No. Oh. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I mean, you know, this is, goes back to the whole don't trust as you don't thing. Yep. Obviously, she has her own motivations and her like an ulterior motive as to why she is so uh, fr friendly with Subaru. 
like Subaru said in this episode, though, it also is probably because of them them sharing the. Oh well, it's weird because Echidona isn't really immortal since she's already dead, but Subaru is. So that whole connection of immortality may be the reason why she is so uh, you know kind of comfortable around him. But it seems like to me that she wants to use Subaru as you brought up with the whole theory of, uh, you know, her wanting to get a body. I definitely think that's feasible because, you know, why have this, you know, experimentation and everything, create, creating these multiple bodies and, and trying to implant your soul into all of these random lollies. If you, why do all that if you didn't want to live again? So I think, She's used using Subaru for that purpose, and I guess that's why he's been bestowed upon the power of being an apostle of greed, and now he's granted an army of lollies. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I just think it's interesting that they both can can command the law. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going on with Garfield. I mean, it, to me. The way he's so he's so um, cautious around Subaru and the witch and the witches, and how he was about to kill Subaru because of him thinking that he was possibly uh, um damn what the fuck is a cult a witch cultist. I don't think he took upon that power really willfully. It was probably something that he reluctantly did to protect the village, maybe. So I think that's what's going on there. Because he, he, he's definitely not really a witch cultist. He, he doesn't seem that way. Um, so I think that's, that's what's going on. But I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't fucking know. Sadly, though, Subaru and his attempts to uh, hold hands with Amelia at least once... Uh, it's just it keeps getting thwarted by Puck. He uh he runs into Amelia at night. He's like, "Oh, Amelia, you look like a fairy. You're so beautiful." Why would you call me that? <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? Fairies are evil. And I'm not mm-hmm. tr. And he's like, "But it's a but but I'm giving you a compliment." Like, oh, I don't trust you, Subaru. You're Mason? insulting uh-huh. me. And uh, they have a conversation, and and Subaru is basically like saying, "Like I'm doing everything for you, Amelia. I love you so much." And, and Amelia's like, "Where's Puck?" <laughs> and, and Subaru's like, you bitch. "Ah, shit. She doesn't love me yet." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's she 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 hates him. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> like that. But, yeah, yeah, I don't they, think she hates him. I think she's just... Just cares more know. about Puck right now. Right, Puck exactly. Focused. Can't think about loving Super. Yeah, she cares about a magical uh, cat-looking floaty thing that can turn into Godzilla. She's a furry. She sure <laughs> is. Well, uh, and so what uh, in this show? Well, I mean, okay. Well, she considers him her father, so I, I don't think maybe a Amelia father needs, you can fit in the palm of your hand. Maybe, maybe she needs help if she's, she's into furries. I. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot to go around. <laughs> I mean, because at that point, it's like, well. Is it because of Puck? Like, why? Yeah, well, everybody's pretty much a furry when you watch ReZero. I mean, I guess that makes sense. Whether it be Felix or Frederica or whoever, everyone's a furry. So Garfield's a furry that got fucked up. Oh, yeah. Gar- Freaking just all of that, that energy just... Shoom. And we saw in the last... Not last, but episodes before how freaking powerful... You know, he was, and he got owned by the Witch of Envy like nothing. Oh, I love oh, yeah. I love when she was, like, swaying back and forth. And then Subaru's like... She kept like, saying, I love you. I, I love just, you. I love when Subaru was like, 
I love Rim and Amelia. And also, <laughs> I, don't, I don't love you at all so much that I'd rather love Echidona. And she just stopped. And she was like, dare you say her name in front of me? Right. And now I'm going to yeah. make you love me. <laughs> that Probably it's not wise to do that when you're dealing with the Witch of Envy. It's kind of in the title description. I mean... And, you know, it, it's probably also due to the fact that, you know, she ate all of the witches. So maybe she's like, bitch, I am Echidona. <laughs> I ate her. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's another thing is, like, he was able to connect a bunch of memories to find this location. Which, by the way, has the same butterfly clip that Echidona wears on, like, the wall or the door or whatever it was. So I thought that was an interesting indicator that this is Echidona's, like, place, right? Uh, yep. I think, I think those memories came from Echidona. Could be. Quite possible. I, I don't even know, man. Because he said, I, I got memories from the... It must be from the people that... that it must be from Satella's victims. So yeah, <laughs> she ate. She ate like everyone. She ate everyone in the village, pretty much. And uh, since we know about all the witches, it could be anybody. Well, not anybody, but you know, could be. It's a Amelia. <laughs> it's all Amelia. All right. Amelia was just hungry, and she ate everybody. Well, it's either that or someone was controlling her body. That was my theory because it looked a lot like Amelia. That's well. That's what I think it is. I think it's just he was controlling Amelia's body. Yeah, but I, I was literally like taking it back. I'm like, <gasps> it was her the whole line, the two timing bitch. But <laughs> then I was just like, wait, hold on. Well, Maybe I mean, she you was can, just being taken over. You can kind of uh, do a process of elimination with based off what we know about uh, Amelia's contract with Puck. Because if Amelia would 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 be dead. Because Rem and uh, or Ram and Otto died, or yeah, I think those are the two that died at the beginning of the episode. Yeah, yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. So if you could infer that, you know, at that point you'd think Amelia would be dead, and if Amelia dies, the snow, like everything, would be turned into a winter, like how it was in the previous uh, when when the Great Rabbit showed up and everything was snow. So I like how they're called the Great Rabbits. There's nothing great about them. They're really small. Oh, kind of cute. No, they're not. <laughs> Don't ever say that again. They're cute. They're kawaii. Oh, yeah, totally. Kawaii this and that. I love how you eat my eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so at the end, we see uh, next episode, we're going to get some Biko stuff. Oh, my God, Beatrice. Oh, yeah, it's just something, and, 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 yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. There's probably going to be some uh, uh, Sasuke's wife in there. Uh, yeah, there's probably going to be some interesting stuff going on this next episode. Frickin' this next episode is 11 of 13. So we literally got three episodes left, boys. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh See, I think I think Biko could convince Elsa to just calm down, stop murdering. I think I think Biko would be like, just stop murdering, I suppose. And Elsa would be like, oh, that was cute. And then she would stop. And then she'd become Moe. Yeah, look at them titties. Slice. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't think it's like like it takes war to stop Swiper from stealing shit and door to store. <laughs> I don't think it'll be that easy. But uh, I We'll see. Maybe Elsa just has a weak spot for cute things. Right. But considering that, well, you had to, you had to. Oh no. You had, you would have to conform to one thing. Either she doesn't think Petra is cute, or, or, hey, or she just likes murdering more than cute things. One Elsa, no slicing. Elsa, no slicing. <laughs> Elsa, no slicing. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> she just walks away. <laughs> <laughs> uh light roller says elsa yuck <laughs> it's it's to trigger me <laughs> are you triggered no okay i want to say this guy's pretty much a troll <laughs> I love light roller. 
But somebody else says, Moe Elsa. Oh, he's a watcher of the ReZero podcast. That guy's a legend. So, yeah, this episode was pretty good. Pretty great. Uh, lots of stuff to talk about. There was, I had four pages of notes. Got through all. So, yeah, I assume we're all passing. Yeah, might as well. Hey! All right. I don't know what you're talking said. about. Dora the Explorer. And just, since we're talking about Dora the Explorer, I feel like, see, I can hit stop. You see Swiper? Where? Let's talk about Snafu. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. This was a good episode. I watched this episode and I turned into a freaking fangirl in this damn episode. And I went, what am I doing? I'm 33, year old, 33 years old in a damn parking lot going, <gasps> <laughs> and it was when I thought for a second that my man Hachiman was about to hold Yukino's hand. I was like, <gasps> <gasps> no. Oh yeah, I, I know. I thought we were going to go to that extreme outside. <gasps> Hand holding? And then he was just prying her frick fingers off of him and then just walking away. I'm like, you son of a bitch! Why didn't you do what I wanted you to do? She had that look, too, of like, I kind of do want to hold your hand right now, Hachiman. Oh, God. I love this gift. He just he just pried her fingers off of him, and then he's like, "I want to talk to your sister." <laughs> Which, by the way, oh my god, she's the worst. <laughs> she is the worst. She is, she is the worst kind of person. I mean, she's she's more realistic, I guess, but she can definitely be a little more subtle in her approach. Hmm. But I I feel. And this is just me personally. I feel like she sees a lot of herself in him. So she kind of has this. She's, she's, you know, she's always said that she's been this fake person and no one's, and she's willing to show, I mean, other than her family and the friends around her, but always uh, showing Hachiman her true self. And I feel as if she's kind of given him that advice to kind of basically say, don't make the same mistakes I did. Though it'd be mean in the way that she's saying it, she, you know, she's being legit with it, but boy, do sometimes I want to chop her in the throat. Oh, wow. <laughs> just right yeah. there on the windpipe, just... <clears throat> oh, no. You know? I, I don't know, it's weird because I, I don't exactly agree with y'all, and it's weird because Hardo is... Easily my is she my least favorite? I don't think she's exactly my least favorite, but I don't like Harno. But I do respect what she does for the series and what she does for uh, specifically Hachiman because I think when Hachiman tries to delude himself into thinking that he can keep up the status quo with his relationship with Yukino and Yui. Mm-hmm. Harno is always the person who's skeptical of it and makes him question everything and makes him kind of see reality for what it is. So she is the eye opener that I feel all three of them need. She's not going to be thanked for it. It's kind of like Hachiman in a way, just like EA said, of you know her seeing herself in him. She also does like these thankless jobs that people don't necessarily appreciate until, you know, maybe in retrospect they will. But it's always because in the manner in which she does it, she's very hand, uh, heavy handed in her approach. Like he said again, she's not really subtle about anything. So she can come off as, uh, for lack of better words, bitchy. But mm-hmm. I think, I think you do have to appreciate what she does for them. Because she does get them to move their move their relationship in um, a forward motion rather than having it complacent. I like. I, like I, I just, man, when Yukino was like standing up to her mother and like telling her what she wanted to do and what she's interested in, and Haruno is just sitting there looking at her nails. I was like, you are the worst (laughs) 
And later on, she's like, what is, like, they're, like, what they have to offer for her will not appease her. Like, they have to do something for her or something, what she implied. But she doesn't want to do it. Like, she's not going to help. That's basically what she said. And she gave the face, like, that evil sister face. And I was like, ah, why? Why are you so mean? Be nice. Just yeah. play along. She, that's definitely not her character, though. She's not one to sugarcoat anything, that's for sure. But I almost feel like, in a way, she speaks <laughs> for the audience, in a way. Because I noticed a lot of those when she was speaking. She said, you got to give us something better than what you guys are doing. <laughs> yeah. I, I really <laughs> like you're you're speaking to the audience because how many times have we seen that anime where it's like i love everyone and i don't want to pick any girl except everybody and then everybody just smashes their keyboard in frustration i uh <laughs> i feel i feel like we are going to get a proper ending i may i i'm not gonna lie i am a little nervous as to there's literally only two episodes left this next one and then the one after so i don't know if they could literally like wrap everything up in those two episodes i'm not saying it's not possible it just has me on edge thinking that we're gonna get a shit ending and i don't want that i really don't oh apparently the light novel readers hate this anime adaptation i don't know what i hear yeah, I didn't know how much they hated it until I seen a thread on Twitter and people were talking about it. They apparently do not like this anime adaptation whatsoever. I mean, from our perspective, I, of course, the way we've been talking about it, I don't think any of us feel that way. But when it's over, I am interested to see what changes were made to make people feel that way. Okay. Because if it does end up being unsatisfactory, the ending, then... I wonder if things were uh, how the light novel were. Um, will my opinion on the series change? But that's it, not going to be something I look into until it, it's all it's all said and done. It's over. Right. I've personally always wanted to check those out because I've heard that though it does stick with the same story and plot, that there are little things that aren't mentioned. Uh, in the the show, and if they are, they're like in passing that they go into like greater detail in the light novel. And I've always been curious to see what those were. One of these days. <laughs> it's interesting you say that because I have a couple light novel re readers in my Discord, and I haven't heard anything specifically about the adaptation for this at all. So that's interesting you say that. Yeah, yeah it's 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 crazy because. It, you know, I make videos on my channel, and there's a few people that are saying, like, yeah, the light novel readers are very upset with this. And then I did a little research, and sure enough, yeah, they're just, they're just saying that they've taken not so much liberties, but they've just omitted a lot from the last two or three chapters or volumes or whatever. And they're not including it in there when they should be. And I'm like, I wonder why they're doing that. It's weird. I but I digress. I'll I'll wait and see. Like I said, I'm a little nervous with the ending. You know, you spend seven years <laughs> wanting to see how something ends. You kind of get nervous. They'll, they'll have to make a, a movie to <laughs> to give the fans what they want. Hey, it's like Aniplex. Evangelion. It's it's Aniplex. They maybe want to do. They may do that. They made the last Aniplex. three episodes of. <laughs> oh my god! Everybody does that. Like the last Aniplex. five people I've talked to about Aniplex, they immediately go Aniplex. Um, <laughs> what they do? It's I didn't even Lotsky, I didn't even think you knew about that. That's such an oh, old yeah. opening for Aniplex. Yeah, I watch anime. Oh. <laughs> just just a little bit. <laughs> uh, I don't remember what I was saying. It doesn't matter. I like how at the beginning of the episode, Iroha. He's like, I got my minions from the soccer club on it. And if there's a wardrobe malfunction, I hired somebody uh, like to scare, to like yeah. make sure it like goes through or something. To, and, <laughs> and Hachiman is like, why does she, why does she make it seem like 
they're a part of the Yakuza. <laughs> <laughs> but I love how Iroha has minions. She uses that word, minions. Yes, she did. They do her bidding. And all I can just imagine are those little yellow creatures just going around going, <laughs> I'm like, oh, God, no. But Yakuza is even better. <laughs> it's just, yeah, and it was Kawasaki. Just, <laughs> yep. Yep, freaking, we got a mean dresser, or whatever she said, and she's just stomping around the back of my desk. That's <laughs> she, her. like, That's looks good. at the camera or whatever. <laughs> I thought that was so great. Yeah, Kawasaki's so great. Love Kawasaki. Me too. I love uh, the Roja. The Roja's great as well. Freaking, did anyone feel like they were leading up to this damn prom this entire season? And they did it in like five minutes, and they felt yeah. a little disappointed. Yeah, I did as well. Yes. It was like, ah, oh, just came and went. I was like, wait, that's it? They they, uh, they they didn't even do anything. I mean, there was a couple of moments here and there, but at the for the most part, it was just like, here we are. This is it. Now it's over. Shit. Yeah, <laughs> I felt so kind of underwhelmed by it. I was thinking to myself, as illogical as it seems, I was like, is this like a a pre prom? Like, what is going <laughs> I was on? That's the same what I thought. Thing. Yeah. I like thought it was like rehearsal. Prom. Yeah. But then people started showing up, and I'm like, oh. Oh, well, uh, <laughs> I guess that was the real thing. Yeah. Iroha and Gaia have a moment that was pretty interesting. Iroha's like, you should join the student council. Oh, yeah. She fucking gets close and yeah. makes an advance. Up on his face. Yeah. And this is why I love you, Roha. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's just like, uh, yeah, I, let me think about it. <laughs> she's, she's just all up in it, just making the, the, yeah, she's not. She knows. Oh, yeah. She wants to be. You know, she's, she's not dismissive whatsoever. No, 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 no. I think that she knows her powers. I think she's already figured it out that everybody... Everybody, you know, likes her for a reason because she said moments prior to this, like, like, like the progression of these relationships that she's had with all these dudes, which was basically like, get to know the guy. After three days, they start calling her by her first name, which in Japan is like a big, means you're like super close and all that. And they ask him to, and then they ask her to come over and hang out. And then they, over a couple more steps, they they ask her out, be to be their her. her his girlfriend and um he ha she has to is. to turn them down uh so i think she's figured out at this point how how to make you know how to get her way and i think that was one of those instances where like we know from season two that's how she kind of operates and she gets right. very close and all that to make sure she gets her way and she just plays it off jokingly like oh i'm sorry i have to turn you down <laughs> she Wait. did that again this episode. Yeah, but I felt like I felt like this time it was definitely more of like she wanted a goal from the from like she wanted to get them to join the student council because she likes all of them. She likes mm -hmm. Yukino Yui and Hachiman. Yeah. And she and, like and she a, meant it. And and about that student council thing, if you remember that's also something the former student council president Megory, Mego, yeah, Megory, Megory, yeah, I think that was her name. Like, she brought this. She brought up the same thing, where you know, um, she was like, "I, w I was hoping that Yukino would become student council president, and all of you, Yui, and you would join the student council all together." And that was something Hachima didn't think of at that time when. Uh, they were when Yukino was helping with the student council and everything, and uh, they just weren't together in the club. So uh, the fact that Iroha brought that up, she's obviously aware of Hachiman's relationship with Yui and Yukino and how close they are, and she kind of gave Hachiman the rope to uh, take that opportunity. But the way things are going, that that's not going to happen. It doesn't seem like it. No. Uh... No, I don't think so. Uh, and and she was quick to fire the like the 
the vice president too. She was like, <laughs> Achimanda was like, wait, I thought you said you only had one spot left. She's like, oh yeah, I could, I could just fire the vice president. I'm like, damn. <laughs> She's ruthless. <laughs> That's a great picture, by the way. I totally, I, I, I thought she had her hands on his legs the first time. Now I'm seeing that that's an armrest, and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Iroha um, wants what she wants. Sure. Yes, 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 yes. She will. She will make him become vice president. <laughs> I like how For- Yukino is talking to uh, the Hachiman. He's like. Hachiman, I want you to decide uh, on this wish or whatever. And, uh-huh. and and then she says like moments later, like, and my shoulders hurt. Can we hurry this up or something? And then and then Hachiman was basically made a flat joke and said, I don't even know your shoulders. Why would your back hurt? Yeah. <laughs> like there's the, you, you're not, not like you have any issues. <laughs> I believe you said something similar in their first encounter too. He he, he does. He was, he was he was like he was like why would I be looking at you uh in that in that way you flat chested bitch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some of those something. lines I remember. Yeah, and then that's when she, you know, gave him the venom right back, and he's like, oh, you're the ice queen. I okay, I remember you. <laughs> uh freaking uh. Yui and Hachiman oh, slow yeah. dance. They danced, and it was just like in there. It was just there, and I was like, <laughs> I know that all the more reason to to feel sorry for Yui. Oh man, she actually got to hold his hand while they were dancing. Yes. Sure. Oh my god. Yeah, Why? and she's she's slow dancing with him, and when the song was over, she didn't even want to let go. She was just like. God, I can't remember what she said, but it was something along the lines of just like, you know, I just wanted this to last just a little longer or something. I think could be wrong. Yeah, it was something similar to when she fell asleep. Yeah. Fake fell asleep. Right. Which was such a touching scene too. That yeah. drips uh, drips of drips of tears going down her face as she's oh, pretending man. to sleep. I'm like, oh, that was so beautiful. And uh Yui is ah. Uh... Best. Too bad she's gonna lose. Uh-huh. I, I feel like that's what the light novel. I, I mean, I don't know anything about the light, light novels, but I feel like they are probably mad that things with Yukino are possibly being cut out or something. Because realistically, just from what's been going on in this season, I cannot see Hajiman being with Yukino and that being like good in my eyes you know they they, they've had development um prior to this season but in this season alone they they have not had that much time together really you know so i I just can't see it right now no that's a really good point because i i i feel like it's the exact same way like if he was to you know end up being with Yukino, which that seems like the most likely choice out of all of them, only because of their personalities and whatnot. It just it would just seem like a total dick move, especially with how much time we've spent with Yui this season and just how she's been pouring her guts out and just doing anything and everything to like win his love, it looks like and <laughs> she's she's still gonna get turned down. It's like, no Poor, poor you. <laughs> I won't turn her down. No, I know you won't. <laughs> but you're going to jail, though. What? <laughs> why would I be going to? Oh, now I know why. No, no, no. You got to do the the anime math of the age. You got to do that. Oh yeah. That that saves you every time. Wait, there's anime math. Yeah, I did it when. <laughs> I did it when I was drunk, and I said, you take the age of the voice actor and the age of the character, you add them and divide them, and that's the real age of the person. All right. Checks out. Yep. Like how you just agree upon that, Sasuke. You're like, yeah, sure, whatever. Works for me. (laughs) Because, you know, the people that are voicing them aren't, like, that young. Not usually, anyway. Have a good day. Skull out of hell. Full name. 
Um, I know hell. <laughs> uh, yeah. Last the last part, uh, he gets picked up by uh, Haraska Sensei. Yeah, and she's like and a pro get... at baseball. Because of course, yeah. Well, she's she's good at everything. She's a keeper. She's just a weirdo. It's fine. Sure. And she smokes. Well, we can work on that. No, I mean we can, but you know. It's all about the her if she wants to quit. She needs to take some of that Nicorette gum. She needs to have patches. And you know new what? New clothes. New clothes and a new... New clothes body. so that we won't smell that cigarette smoke. And you know what? I think you'll be getting uh, quite a bit of people just uh, wanting coming your way. Oh, man. Imagine. Just imagine. I imagine she wears, like, her best clothes for work. So she probably doesn't smell like a smoke or whatever at school. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. oh, my, oh, my God. Imagine just, like, getting in her car... It being in her house, just thinking, oh man, this like Going girl's like bedroom. really sophisticated. She teaches like you know kids. Like she's like she's she's under. She's like she's great. Like she's beautiful. Uh, she has a nice buckle. Uh, oh oh oh. Okay. That buckle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I almost thought you said butthole. <laughs> <laughs> no no no. Jesus, That's why no. I went. Wait, what? Jesus Christ, no! And she then you just nice you just you just go into her house, and all you smell is like everything's like yellowed. It's got like a yellowing to it. There's ashtrays with cigarettes in it, and it just smells awful. And you're like, I think my mom called. I need to leave. I left my refrigerator running. Oh, uh, yeah. I I gotta go. Uh, wash my house. <laughs> <laughs> this late at night? Yes, yes, I have to do it right now, like right now. <laughs> it's like that episode of Family Guy, where where the guy opens the door and like Meg is like asking him out or whatever, and and the guy's oh, like, the guy's like, I can't go out on a date with you. And she's like, Why? Because I just shot myself in the foot. It's like, What are you talking? <laughs> or no, she's like, No, he's like, I just got shot in the foot. I have to go to the hospital. And but she's you like, look what fine. are you talking? You look fine. <laughs> Closes the door, shoots himself in the foot. <laughs> and he starts oh, walking God. away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, this episode was great. Yeah, it was, it was pretty good. Yeah, I loved it. I just, I'm, I'm a little nervous. They, like, you know they're trying to fit everything in because they didn't even have the ending song. <gasps> That's what I wanted to bring up. Anybody knows the beginning song? Y- uh, Yukino looks out the whole time. This is the first time where she actually turns around and looks right into the camera. Oh shit! I don't know. If, I don't know if that's symbolism towards something or if that's like somebody's knocking on the door, and they're gonna play the opening, like in the last episode. And at the end of the opening, she's gonna walk over and open the door. Well, because like the lyrics are about you know. Like things coming to an end and things maybe being better somewhere else. And then, like, the whole time it was like it's raining and she's just looking out the window. This is the first time that I noticed it could have happened last episode, but I didn't notice. She literally turns around and is looking at the camera. I'm like, oh, does that mean something? I don't know. Oh man, it means everything. It means she's going to open the door. Animated. Oh shit. She's going to open the door. <laughs> And uh, Shinji's father. And I'm gonna be there. He's gonna open the door. Shinji's father is gonna be there, and, she, and he's and he's gonna say to her, "Get in the mech." Come. Oh, you I thought you were gonna say, "Come to daddy." <laughs> <laughs> Have a fun time at church, Ram Ram. Ramu Ramu. So, right. pass. I might as well pass. I guess. Yeah, it's just... Yeah! Yes! Oh, okay. I went, pass! Pass! I'm gonna pass it. I'm gonna pass this enemy, Dad! God. Uh, let's talk about... Let's, let's move it on over to the, uh... The old Nakama Club. Let's talk about two episodes of Ping Pong the... Anim- Wait, maybe two. Sasuke, how much did you watch? I watched two. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. We're talking about Ping Pong the Animation, episodes 7 and 8, 
And I I know like okay, I'm just I just need to say this about episode eight. Peiko and Wenge. Oh my god. That was a great that was a great match, wasn't it? That was incredible. I was like mm-hmm. and Wenge lost? Mm-hmm. I never expected that. What a twist. <laughs> And not only did he lose, he got, well, he didn't get skunked, but he, he didn't even score a point on him at all. He, he lost three to nothing in yeah. points. Yeah, because starting with the last episode, with episode seven, or episode, at the end of episode six, he decides to trade with, with the old lady. In episode seven, it's pretty much, you know, about a lot, of, like a good portion of it is focused on Peiko just training. And what a lot of people, uh, well, maybe you guys notice, and I'm just assuming, <laughs> but basically a year has gone by since they had the last match. Oh, I didn't and know that. Yeah, that's why um, it seems so sudden, but a, actually a year has gone by because, yeah, like the last time they had fought, or fought, the last time they had played, Everybody from that high school that shaves their head won, and it was like a no contest. And they've been literally training for like a year. And yeah, Peko's been training for a year. You know, he progressively got better and better and better. And now he's, I guess you could say he's back to his old self, if not better, because now he's starting to take himself seriously as opposed to, you know, just doing them fancy tricks in between the legs and whatnot. But yeah, a year has passed. And it looks like old uh, Wenge is cashing his uh, ticket back to China. Yeah, yeah. I just realized, by the way, for the dub, the English, the English voice actor is the Chinese voice actor. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. So I, I, because when he spoke English, I was like, man, he sounds so similar to the Chinese guy, and it is <laughs> him. He speaks Chinese. Very yeah. good. Yeah. That was pretty cool. He sounds like Johnny Young Bosch or something, which is weird, but... It could be him. Is it him? I don't know if Johnny Young Bosch can speak Chinese. Can Johnny somebody... Young Bosch, if you're, if you're listening right now, please let us know. Can you speak Chinese? <laughs> somebody hopefully can tell us if they know in the chat. If not, also show up. Um, but yeah, I mean, what I love about these two episodes, though, is just... Going from, like, the first six episodes, we see Peiko, who is just eating all the time. Like, he's, he's like, squandering everything. And these last two episodes are, like, a complete turnaround. Mm-hmm. And he goes from, from being that guy to being, you know, getting right back on the right track. You know, getting better. Practicing with the old lady who is, like, you know... I like how they have, like... <laughs> like their dynamic <laughs> with each other is like they're going out. Yeah, it's so funny. Yeah, and I, and I it's just so... it's so Peiko. and she like like she just goes along with it, which is the best part. Yeah, she's just like well, whenever he's working out the first time, she's like, you gotta at least get a minute up these steps in order to go back onto paddles, and he's <laughs> she's like. Uh, just imagine I am your sweet honey. <laughs> and he's just like, <laughs> yeah. And, she, and she's like, stop vomiting or whatever. And he's like, it's not, I'm not vomiting because I like to vomit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I love, I love their dynamic. It's so funny. And, and also like kind of inspiring too makes me feel like i need to find myself an old granny to teach me things and like Freaking old granny and then his uh her her son was also helping too right yes i thought that that uh, also was pretty cool very high spirited and high and just like all high energy and he, he almost kind of reminds me of people that are like in the army most of their life and he's just like yes i obey and this is what i do sir. <laughs> i like to think that's just what She's that's just how she raised him. Right. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I, I just those those were the best parts of episodes for me. Uh I also like the moment I think it's in episode eight 
where, where Sukimoto is, is, is talking to, like, he, he's talking to his coach, and, and he's like, he says something like, uh, what are you doing here? You're going to lose. And he's like, what do you mean? I did lose. He's like, what? And then he's like, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. You didn't even watch my match. Oh, I know you'd win. Well, I lost. What? <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's so great, so great. Um, oh man, there's also the stuff with Noriko, where where she's like trying to like you know be there a supportive girlfriend, right? And that that one guy I can't remember his name. He's like, just go see he's her. A dragon. Yeah, yeah. He's just like, why aren't you going to go see her? Go see her. And he's just so focused. I thought that was interesting. We also learned about Butterfly Joe. Mm. I thought that Butterfly was... Joe is a very cool character. Yeah, uh, he he talks about how you know his partner had Butterfly Joe had an injured knee, and he helped him get through that injury, and he became you know this big thing, and he was kind of meant for that spot. And he tells Tsukimoto that the reason that I'm training you isn't isn't because I want to use you for revenge. Which I, I think that was a really cool moment to clarify in their relationship that you're I'm not using you for for my own gains. I'm I, I'm training you because I want to. I want to see you do great things. And, and, and the relationship we have is a genuine one. Yeah. I think you can you can also tell that the relationship is genuine because Joe is letting Smile make his own decisions. He let those guys in, Kazuma and the other guy, to recruit him. So he didn't try to stop it. He genuinely wants Smile to reach the utmost heights he can reach. It's not about you know um, him trying to. Uh, he like him, like he only wants to coach. It is is really about him. He he just wants him to be better. And he already said, "I've taught you pretty much everything I can. I can't make sure your your talents blossom more than I've already done. So if you want to move on to this other school, that's what you should should do. But it doesn't seem like a uh, smile is." Someone who's motivated by those things, like they said in the episode, fame, money, or even his own talents, really. Um, so, yeah, I, I think their relationship is pretty cool. Um, there was something else I wanted to bring up. Oh, when you brought up the whole thing with Butterfly Joe. and Because this is real important, because he talked about in the match where he played against the person who we now know is Cosma's grandfather, I believe. He had an injury that he had and they they played prior to that event. Right, yes. But they he had an injury and he basically he kind of threw the game or he made it easier for his opponent because he could have played in a way that utilized or uh honed in on his weaknesses, but that could have potentially injured him. And the reason why that's important is because he had to talk with Smile where he asked, would you be able to do that? Is that's, that's really important because Pecos also has something going on with his leg. He's obviously not letting people know the severity of it, but if the event happens where we, hit, we have Pecos versus Smile in the finals, which I think that will happen, he may be in a situation where um what what butterfly joe said would you be able to uh hone in on someone's weaknesses like that would you risk their career just for the win so i think that's what's going to ha- end up happening with pecos and smile in the end i think i think that i think sugimoto isn't going to i think he's going to i don't think he's going to Make a I don't want to call it a mistake, but I don't think he's going to make that decision to go through with 
I think he's not going to repeat history. I think he's going to beat him because, I mean, you know, he he's learning, you know, from his ex, his coach's experience in the past. So you would think that, you know, going through this moment again, he knows about this story and he knows like what he went through. And while it, you know, sucks for Peko, Peko can, you know, he's very talented, right? He can still do a lot. So I think what I think maybe is the right thing for him to do is just go through with it and actually beat him and not necessarily take advantage of that weakness, but just treat him as like a normal opponent and beat yes. him. And I think yeah. that that is kind of maybe what needs to happen. We'll see based off these next episodes. But yeah, it definitely, that's what I kind of wanted to talk about actually was, was Peko's wrapped knee and how yeah he he doesn't perceive it as an issue and but it definitely is it's going to be an issue yeah i i definitely think that scenario is going to play out i think it's going to be i think how it's going to play out is maybe mal is reluctant to go full in or all in on um you know exposing that injury but it's going to be a situation where pecos is kind of like you know, you're you're way better than this. I want to beat you at your best, so give it all you got. And he's going to take the risk to, you know, injure his friend because they have the same past as, or they have a similar past as Butterfly Joe and um, Cosmo's grandfather. And uh, as you said, it'll probably have a different outcome. You know, yeah. Is yeah. I, I definitely don't think Smile is going to throw the game. Right. I don't think anybody's going to be in that game. I think it's going to be something where there's definitely going to be stakes and they got to like, you know, see it through to the end. Right. And I think that's a good thing for sure. Um, also, um, Peiko has, you know, he like Peiko is not, you know, the thing I, that I found really interesting about Peiko in, the, in episode, I think it was seven when this happened was that Peko has like a lot of people coming by to support him. Like people were in and out like giving Peko a bunch of stuff. And yeah. he had like five younger brothers that all looked like him and even a mother that looked just like him. Yeah. He was living in that freaking dojo just doing training nonstop. Oh, Perry's here. Thank God. Yeah. Uh, I was so worried. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it was a comedic scene, but what that told me is that that Peiko, it, it'll be okay if he, you know, he's going to bounce back, right? Peiko is, isn't going to be like Butterfly Joe in that sense. Where, not that he didn't bounce back, but um, he's going to be successful. He's going to have, you know, that support system to, to be great in the end anyways. So, I don't know. Just something I noticed. Yeah. Yep. And now, I mean, you, you said you liked that match between Peko and Wang, right? Yeah. Well, the final episodes, I'm going to tell you right now, they're all taking place at the tournament. So get ready for some amazing matches with some really awesome animation. Oh, hell yeah. Can't wait. So that's all I'm going to say about that is that, yep. We're in the home stretch, boys. Yeah, short series, definitely. Very good. Short short series, but I feel like it's perfectly short. Like, you know, they did the 11 episodes for, you know, that's how many points you need in order to win a match in ping pong. Uh, and, yeah, that's, <laughs> that, that's telling. And I think that's just attention to detail right there. But overall, this show... It, it just it does everything so right that there's other shows where they do it in like 60 episodes and you're still like going, are you going to get to the point of this? <laughs> Come on. We're, we're still got a hundred episodes left. And, but this show does it in 11. <laughs> Perry says, I escaped from Sotsky's dungeon. He only gave me lemons to eat. No, oh, that was a damn lie. I don't have lemons. <laughs> <laughs> you must have gave him your homemade lemonade. <laughs> I will. I would not. I would not speak to that accusation. I believe the fifth. Word. Uh, too funny. 
So, um, I guess, uh, any final thoughts on Ping Pong the Animation? I did have something. I'm, oh, okay, yeah. There's one more thing. I think what made the Winge and Keiko's match so interesting is that how they grew from their last match, and I'm not talking in just in their skill, they became a lot more humble, but I also like the fact that they didn't completely have an overhaul in their character. Like, for with, with uh, Pecos, for example, he's a lot more humble. He's not He's not uh you know as lazy and he was just relying on his talent his natural talent, but he still even though he got more humble and everything he still does like the celebration after he scores every time like he he still does things like that but obviously now he respects his opponents more so I like the fact that we got a humble Pecos because he's someone I can actually root for now before he was just kind of like an asshole. And even though I like asshole characters, <laughs> uh, I, I couldn't get down with Pico too much. But now that he has some humility, it's, you know, he, he's cool. I like Pico's. Yeah, he's pretty great. Um, that's it. That's it? Yeah, anything? Yep. Fun fact. Um, the old granny, also known as Obaba, she's voiced by the legendary Masako Nozawa, oh, a.k.a. Goku. Goku. Damn. So I just I just thought I'd like to throw that out there. I know you're watching the English one, but yeah, she's a part of the Japanese version. That's pretty... I mean, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. She's, she's almost 100 years old. and Born in, born in 36. And she's still like she's doing Goku, and and she's still doing voices. It's she, amazing. The fact that she's still she's not senile, and crazy at this point is miraculous. Let alone being able to scream and yell Kamehameha and uh, it's freaking. By the hopefully twenty twenty ends pretty soon, or I'm gonna go freaking senile. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm already there. <laughs> Where's my bourbon? Uh, so I guess we've reached the end of Nakama Club. So, or EA, where can they find you? You can find me at Everything Animated. You just type that in, find my lovely face, and you'll find my Goku-inspired face. <laughs> um, I've I got another uh, Snafu video I need to make, so if you want some more Snafu content, please sub to my channel. Uh, me and my girlfriend have a channel called All Elite Couple, and we actually are now at 53 subscribers. I, f I feel like we have just started doing this, and now we're into double digits. We're almost to 100, ladies and gentlemen, and we would like to get to 100. That is All Elite Couple. Just see our two lovely faces reacting to some fun stuff, including WAP. <laughs> Need a, and and some other things as well. I need to put uh, a link to your channel in the description. Okay, but I would I would greatly appreciate that. I have I have the just the link for your channel, but not all elite. So I need to do that. All right. Well, thank you, Sotsky. Where can they find you? You can find me on Sotsky the Savage as well as Sotsky. The Reactor, that's the better channel, apparently, from what everybody tells me. Um, I love React to ReZero, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I'm almost done, or, well, part three right now, but I'm almost done with that part. Want to get a part four, and maybe I'll take up other anime, but I'll have to decide that in the future. But that is it for me. Yeah, Twitch has no links, XP, but you can find it in the YouTube description so uh yeah thanks everybody for watching this week's episode of the king of anime podcast in the coming weeks make sure you're subscribed and make sure to ring that bell on the youtube because um every couple days or so one of these weeks we're going to be announcing all the shows that we're going to be covering for the next season of koa and my i gotta say this is one of the most jam-packed seasons we're going to have next season so uh this will be 
kind of like the most shows we've covered since the first iteration of King of Anime Podcast. So it'll be fun. It'll be interesting. We're going to switch things up, and I think you guys are going to love it. So with that being said, thanks, everybody, for watching the show. See you guys next week. Bye-bye.